And of course, it wouldn't be a sustainable living home expo without touching on how new home and renovation projects can be designed to make the most of our beautiful environment and subtropical conditions. Rebecca will share basic everyday tips about the design considerations that will make a huge difference to the comfort, energy efficiency, and most importantly, the livability of your existing home, your new home, or your renovation. Rebecca is a locally based registered architect with over 20 years experience in the building industry. Her search for a deeper understanding of green building techniques led her to Brazil in 2008, where she was mentored by the world famous author of The Barefoot Architect, jo Johan van Lengen, at his Bioarchitecture Institute, lo located in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. What a terrible place to have to spend some time. This led Rebecca to start her own eco building business in Latin America in 2011, which led her to bringing her expertise in grey water systems, passive house design green roofs, earth building techniques and composting toilet techniques to Australia. Rebecca's motto is start small and start with what you have. Big changes will eventuate. Thank you, over to Rebecca. Okay, oh, here I am, <laughs> sorry. Thank you everybody. And I really loved uh, just hearing all of those talks uh, uh, prior to this one on the garden design it's been so fabulous I've, I've really learned a lot and the, and the fantastic thing is it's a really great uh, way to lead into my talk because at the end of the day we've got to be thinking about our uh, you know our local environment as a holistic type of design and incorporating garden design as well as house design in our sustainability um, measures moving forward so really fantastic talks and I hope that's um, a little bit of a yeah, good intro to, to my talk. Thank you very much, Jane, for the intro. And thanks very much to HR Council for putting on this expo, fabulous initiative for the, for the region. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join, to join us here. Uh, and also thank you very much to Tweedshire Council for inviting me to present this talk on sustainable design which is my absolute favorite thing to talk about and I could talk for literally hours upon hours but I'll do my best to condense it down into a few short minutes and I look forward to your questions at the half time. So sustainable design and sustainable principles when we think about this or when you know when when I ask you what does sustainability mean to you what are the first things that come to your mind? You know, is it is it uh, when we're thinking about around the home, when we're thinking about work, when we're thinking about getting to work, are we thinking about uh, the fact that we've got solar, hot water, that we've got water saving devices on our shower heads on, and we've got timers on our taps? Is this the sort of thing that we're incorporating? Because this is an absolutely fantastic start to thinking about uh, minimizing our impact on the planet it's absolutely imperative that we start to all incorporate all of these initiatives but the things that I would like to focus more on uh, for these for these talks is understanding place because place affects our livability of our of our environment and once we really understand place then we can start to work with that to the best of our ability to really make uh, a very comfortable living environment for ourselves that really reduces our reliance on mechanical means of ventilation, uh, heating and cooling to create that personal comfort level that we're all uh, so used to um, every, in everyday life. So talking about place, where, where do we live? We're living in the most wonderful place on the planet which is the Tweed Shire. And this is a really interesting climate zone. It's, it's known as the subtropical climate, which is, which is actually a really uh, small area uh, when you look at Australia in general in different climatic zones. This is a very small band that's just on the coast bordered by the mountains and it means we've got a very hot, humid summer and a mild winter. So we've got these two interesting uh, sort of zones or limitations to work within but it also means that we're very fortunate because we have already a very comfortable living environment so working with that and understanding that we can with a few small adjustments start to really maximize our comfort level in the natural environment 
So by this I mean understanding our level of humidity and heat that uh, is comfortable to live in and what are the small things that we can do around the home now as well as with our renovation if we're thinking of renovating and also when we think about a new build what are the what are the important climatic factors that we that we need to consider so this is all really interesting but understand fully understanding place is really fundamental to the whole sustainable philosophy so often when a i have a new client for instance and you've got a, a you know a big property that you're looking at i recommend and it's not possible for everybody but of course if you have the luxury of time start to really understand that site and that means being there through the torrential rain as well as a hot summer understanding where the water runs through your property understanding how the sun tracks through the middle of summer and through the middle of winter and just where it rises and where it sets and all of these interesting parts of the equation that really start to influence how you will design your home and so that's when we have the luxury of being able to be on a site for a long time and start to design a home from scratch but when we think about an extension or a uh, even just adapting our living environment currently what are the small features that we can quickly adapt to to our environment so have a think about if you know where the sun rises in the middle of summer and the middle of winter if you know that then that's a really good start because often it takes people a little bit of time to think about that and actually to realize that in the middle of summer and the middle of winter it does rise and set in very different places so this is part of uh, these very fundamental principles that I'll go through in a little bit more depth in the second half of the talk. But as a broad overview, we've got five fundamental uh, principles to, to think about. And these are orientation, glazing, thermal mass, insulation, and ventilation. And once we really get a good handle on these key principles then we can very quickly enhance that living environment which is the key to sustainability as I see it it's that livability and that um, adaption of the of that beautiful natural environment that we have so that we can be have, have more flexible space and have that indoor outdoor lifestyle that really is so much a part of living in the Tweed so that's the first part of the presentation and then in the next part we'll start to get into a little bit more depth on each of those principles. Well everyone, welcome back and I'm sure you've had a bit of time to think about what sustainability means to you and what you've managed to, you know, what you're incorporating into your home currently. Uh, for this second half of the session I'm just going to touch on each of those sustainable principles or sustainable design principles that really are fundamental in any new build or any um, extension or even currently the small adaptions that you can make to your home to really improve and enhance that liv livability of your of your environment as you can see and hear uh, i'm outside in the garden because i'd much rather be outside on a day like today than inside an air conditioned box so excuse the 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 random birds squawking and flying past but that's all part of part of um, being in the natural environment I suppose so thinking about those principles number one orientation who remembers or has has been camping you know what's the first thing that you think about when you get to a to a campsite I know when I grew up uh, spending many weeks camping with my family the first thing my father would do when we get to a campsite is get out the compass and have a look at where the sun was rising because he wanted to make sure that there was shade in the morning so that you weren't getting belted by the hot sun. And I think that principle and especially that enjoyment of, of camping and understanding that immediate natural environment really did affect my um, uh, architectural career I suppose and really did influence wanting to work you know with this beautiful environment that we have around us 
Um, so understanding the sighting and understanding where the sun rises, where the sun sets, very important to, to understanding passive solar design and sustainability in general, because if we can work with that, then it's less and less time that we're needing to think about even, you know, putting on the air conditioner when we're working with that sunrise point and the sunset, because obviously in the Tweed, the Western sun is a killer and we want to minimize that exposure to the West as much as possible because that's just heating up the house. So if we can, um, if we can really think about a north facing orientation and having as small a wall surface as possible, especially glass surface, we definitely don't want that on the east and the west, then that's going to really help reduce our reliance on other forms of ventilation because we're immediately cutting out that big heat load that we're getting from that incredibly intense western sun. So that's one thing that we really need to think about. It's how we can best orientate the new house or the extension. If we're thinking about just our current um, house and how we can actually work with that to cool it, possibly if we're getting a big heat load from the west, have a think about what, you've, what windows you've got facing the east and the west. In general, the best uh, idea that you can do to cool or to, to control that heat load is vertical louvers on the east and the west and horizontal when you're facing north. And that's going to really cut down a lot of that heat and glare that you're getting. So that's orientation. Then I'll move quickly on to glazing because I really don't have much time at all. But glazing, we want to really think about how we Glazing obviously uh, is a very quick transfer of heat and cold. It doesn't have any insulation value. It's just, um, you know, it's immediate transfer of energy. So when we're thinking about trying to reduce the heat load again, we want to minimize glazing on areas that is going to gain a lot of heat or also lose a lot of heat. So that's why I often try to minimize the large extent of glazing on the south side of a building because you're in the winter you're just losing all of your heat internally out those huge windows to the south so i really try to maximize the glazing to the north but in a controlled way uh, minimize completely the uh, extent of wall surface to the east and the west and again minimize the glazing to the south because that's losing a lot of that heat uh, thermal mass is the next one, which is a really important design consideration. And there's really clever ways that you can use this to trap heat that you want in the winter, as well as trap cool, as I like to call it, in the, in the summer. Now there's a really good book that I, um, I've had with me for probably over 20 years now. And it's called Warm House, Cool House that probably comes up as reversed in the video uh, by Nick Hollow. And that is a fantastic graphic reference for you to just have a look at all the different climate zones and really simple ways to actually to maximize uh, the energy efficiency of your home based on those climate zones. So it's been a bit of a Bible for me for a very long time and I highly recommend it. Uh, those references that we also provide via Tweetry Council within the DCP, uh, also the Your Home uh, that's that the that the, gov the Australian government has provided fantastic resources. Uh, but just for a, a nice and an easily accessible book that's just got a, you know very descriptive, uh, easy easy to um, to read language. Uh, I just absolutely love this book, Warm House, Cool House. So quickly, I'll just touch on the last two items, which are insulation and ventilation in your existing house. Obviously, as you we would be well aware of by now, get that insulation into your roof. Very important. Try to get double insulation if you can. So you get it into the under underside of your roof sheeting and then also above your ceiling. And that's going to really help a lot in winter and in summer. And then if you can, obviously get the wall insulation in as well if you haven't already got it. So those, um, you know, just properly insulating your home and even under the, under your floor is going to make a massive difference to the comfort level inside your home. 
And lastly, ventilation. This is absolutely key in our subtropical environment that we're living in. Ventilation is going to increase your comfort level so much. You know, you will feel just with turning on a fan or opening a few louvers so you get cross ventilation happening through your home, you will find you will never need to even think about turning on the air conditioner. So that is a really, really easy way to get, um, get that comfort level increased in your home. So that's a couple of key design principles and we'll talk more about this in the, uh, the session after this talk. And it's, as I said, it's very difficult to, to run through all of these principles in such a short amount of time, but I hope that's been a bit of an introduction to you and let's talk more after the session. Thank you. Great stuff, thanks Rebecca. The whole ventilation, cross ventilation, I was really happy to see, I visited a friend who uh, lives in, in Tweedshire and they're, they're building their house on their beautiful block of land. And uh, yeah, just seeing how the design took into account um, the use of the, particularly the ventilation and the positioning of, um, of louvers and windows so that they could actually get that, that cross ventilation. Um, a really important thing to consider uh, when you're designing your house and also just how you orientate it, I suppose, on your block. Very important. And it's, it's a couple of interesting things you can do with loopers as well with the position uh, according to the orientation, because as we know, hot air rises. So getting louvers or some sort of vents at a low place on one side of your house plan and then louvers on the other side uh, at a high level will suck that hot air, it will create this convection which just uh, naturally will uh, create airflow and draw the hot air up and through the house. So that's a really easy one to try to get in on, on alternate sides. I do have a slide that I could pop up while we're just having a little bit of a chat, which is a, a graphic um, somewhere here. <laughs> uh, so this is just a graphic sort of uh, representation of those key principles. Um, you know, if you if you look up any sort of passive design on the internet, you'll find this, but that's really encapsulating everything I'm talking about just in a nutshell. So it's really working with those prevailing breezes on our site. Obviously, we get uh, breezes in the winds in the winter that we want to actually keep out of the house. Um, we get really cold southerlies, even westerlies in the Tweed. Um, but trap, but working with those northeasterlies and the cooling breezes in the summer really important, and you can see how the garden design is indicated on this uh, on this slide as well because that is it's really not important. Rebecca. It's not actually sharing. Can you oh, pop the share sorry. screen on? Oh, I apologise. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So um, I've got it. <laughs> too many, too many things open. There we go. Is that sharing the slide? Yep. Okay. That's great. So you can see all of those, um, just in a nutshell, all of the principles, and having that uh, the green, the greenery outside your windows. You know that's cutting down a lot on the on the heat load because it's creating a bit of a cool cooling band as the breeze is coming in. It's also deflecting a lot of the glare. Obviously, much more pleasant to look out to a green. Uh, you know, to greenery outside your home instead of a colour bond fence or something that's directing glare back into the home, depending on what your, you know, how big your site is. But again, something that I think works particularly well in this, uh, in this local environment is the courtyard house design. If we do have the luxury of being able to create a new home or even a, with an addition, any types of uh, court in internal courtyards or um, a pavilion type of design in this climate works extremely well because that's really maximizing your cross ventilation that you can get happening and just getting in the getting in additional vegetation which does again reduce that heat load and just creates the most pleasant natural environment or home environment to to live in so get in that get in that greenery it's really key so it's all working together and again everything that the previous talk, uh, talks have been about uh, and then working that into your home design you're, you're never going to want to leave leave your house or leave <laughs> I don't think so Rebecca we have had a question come in from Robin what about low e glass 
Yeah, that's a fantastic thing to use. And sometimes you, you you must use it. I've used low E glass on projects where I just can't get in sun shading. Uh, and if you've got, say, if you're facing west and you've got some glass there that you really want to get in and you just can't um, get enough shade, uh, you know, external shading, as you can see in that uh, diagram on my screen, then a low E glass is, yeah, it's a really good way to go. Uh, absolutely. It is more costly, but it's, it's, it, is a, it is a very high performance glass system. So it does uh, reduce the heat load internally. Great. Thanks, Rebecca. We'll um, wrap it up there. Um, yeah. Thanks for attending uh, Sustainable Design, all the participants. And uh, thank you, Rebecca Wan, for her for that great and enthusiastic and really, yeah, passionate talk. It was, it was really good to hear. Um, um, you know, all those things that, that were probably quite intuitive when we were building homes ourselves, um, but now we've kind of, we lost a bit of that. And now it's great to see that it's coming, it's coming back into, um, into consideration when people are building their homes.